Good afternoon or good morning, boys and girls. I don't know when you'll watch this, but hopefully you are ready to try some new things. Now, I want to start out by saying I know that we've been getting a lot of time to create in just our own ideas, and I want to remind you, please keep doing that. Don't feel like you have to draw what I'm showing today, but I do want you to start thinking about this and start imagining it. Now, last week, if you did of our activity, you know that we talked about landscapes. I know that a landscape is really just a picture of land. Now, when we talk about landscapes, that's one of our best ways that we can think of trying to draw the world like we see it. Now, one of the things that artists do is sometimes we do try to draw the world we see around us. So today I'm gonna to show you some parts of what we're going to do to do a landscape, and then I'm gonna try some different materials to color it to kind of show you some options you have. Now today, the first thing I'm gonna say is if you only have a pencil at home, that's all you need. If you have other tools, awesome. But as long as you have a pencil and a piece of paper, any type, you can go ahead and use this. Now, I'm not gonna be drawing on this whole thing because I'm gonna try to draw really fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw my piece of paper. Now, again, don't draw your own paper. That's all I need to do. So just remember, this is my piece of paper. Now, on this piece of paper, I'm gonna draw some parts. Now, I drew mine really small because I'm gonna make some notes. Now, one of the things that I'm going to have on here is that I'm going to start thinking about where I want my horizon line. Now, this is another part of a landscape. Now, a horizon line is a really important line, and it usually is about here on my paper. Now, the horizon line is where the sky and ground touch. Now, we know that in the real world, like I said, when you look out far enough, the sky and the ground seem to almost touch each other. Now, it seems really weird because when you're standing in your spot and you look up at the sky, you can see it's above you. And when you look down at the ground, you can see it's below you. But really, the ground and the sky touch and it keeps going past you. And that's one of the hardest things to draw. So when we draw, we use the horizon line to help us with that. So all I'm gonna do is in about the middle of my paper, cause that's usually where the sky and the ground touch, I'm gonna draw a line just from side to side. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect line and it should be a light line cause I might erase some parts of it. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to think about my three parts of a landscape. Now I know I have my foreground and those are my things that are in the front. I have my middle ground. I know that those are the things that are kind of in between the background and the foreground. And I know that I have my background. And those are the things really far away from us. Now here are some tricks. The foreground is always at the bottom of my picture. Sometimes things that are tall though will go all the way up to the very top of my page. So don't think that just because it's only not at the bottom that only part of it's foreground. If I have a tree that starts at the bottom and goes all the way up to the top of my page, it's still all in the foreground. The middle ground is usually near the horizon line. So when I draw, I wanna draw my middle ground around in this area. That's where I'm gonna add my details for it or my things that are in that space. And then the background is usually just above the horizon line. And I'm just gonna write HL so I don't take too long. So I'm gonna draw those parts and then I'm gonna quickly color today and show you some options on coloring it. So first things first, I'm gonna start with my foreground because these are the things that are in the front. They're the things that are on top of everything else. So if I draw the background first, I'm gonna end up covering most of it up. So when I'm drawing, I like to start by drawing my foreground. And I always start with a pencil, no matter what tool I'm using, because pencils can be erased. If I start with paint or I start with marker or I start with crayon, I can't take it away once I've got it on there. So I'm gonna look outside my window today to help me draw, and here's what I see. I have this big black walnut tree here, and it goes way down from the bottom. I'm looking at my window, and way down at the bottom of my window is where it starts. So I can see it come up, and I see that it kind of branches out, and I've got one branch that goes this way, and comes back in, and then go all the way up to the top of my window. So I'm gonna draw them off my page. 
and then I see this other part that goes way high up, and then I see it come down, and then there's this little bit makes another little branch this way. So I've got these three branches here. Now, can I see the top of my tree? No, but that's okay, because in real life, I might not see everything. I can only draw what I see though. Next, I'm gonna keep looking and I notice that behind my yard, so my yard is kind of ending right about here, and past my yard, where that is, is this big cornfield back here. So I'm gonna leave that empty, but I'm gonna draw this line for where my grass ends and my cornfield starts. And then way beyond the cornfield, there are some trees way back here. Now, I know that as things go into the background, I can see almost no details. So I don't wanna draw every single tiny tree that I see, but I know that there's a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna kinda of make it, and this is the, my cool trick that I use. When I draw trees that are in the background, kinda of make it look like it's a fluffy cloud right on the horizon line. I'm gonna draw that all the way across so it looks like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and draw one more thing because right between my yard and my cornfield, I have some bushes so that kinda of helps keep the dirt down when they're out working in the field. And again, I can't draw all the details in my bushes, but I'm gonna make this one look like it's kind of like another line of trees like I did back here. And then I'm gonna also add in some of my branches, which I'm gonna just draw little lines because I know that in my bushes, I'm pretending like it's summer. I can't see all my details of my branches because my bushes are in the way, all those green leaves. So I'm just gonna draw little lines. Now my foreground I know has the most detail. So my background has almost no detail. My middle ground has some detail. That's why I can see some more of the branches that I couldn't see back here. And then my foreground has the most. And so when I look at this tree, I know that it, I have tons of textures on that tree. And it kind of looks like little bits of lines all over the place because when my tree has bark on it, it gets some weird cool textures like that. And maybe I even want to get a piece of bark from my yard and I could use it as a texture rubbing to help color this. But I'm going to pretend like I had all that drawn. Now, once I've got all my pieces of my landscape in here and all the things that I want in it, that's when I get to start coloring. Don't start coloring until you know where everything goes and you remember what you want everything to look like. So now that I've got this on here, I'm going to start coloring. Now I'm gonna start just with a pencil because again, I know some of us don't have other tools at home. and That's okay. Not all of us have a lot of the things that we might have in the art room. That's fine, we can use the tools we have. In fact, I know some artists who only work with pencil and that's it. Now, when I color with pencil, I can start by coloring in and I can use my pencil to get different types of colors. And for this, we're gonna use different types of values is really what they're called. Now a value is made by either pressing light and getting a very light color, and I can get really, really light, or it can be dark, and that's where I start to press harder and harder and harder until it turns almost to black. So I can use these two, or these different types of values to color something in. So I'm gonna pretend my tree here in the foreground, I'm gonna color it really fast, and I'm gonna color it in. Now you guys know when I color, you'll notice right away, I'm not scribbling all over the place, am I? When I color, I like to color just a little area at a time and color it in all the way and then move to another spot. A lot of you have listened when I've talked to you about that, but some of us still like to scribble around like this and then it takes way longer. If I color a little space at a time and then move to another space, I can color in really fast and really nicely. Once I've gotten it colored in with my light color, now I can go in and I'm gonna press harder with my pencil to make some of those textures on that tree for that bark. And I'm gonna keep going. Now, I might have on my tree, maybe I wanna add things like a squirrel or things like that on my tree, and that's totally fine because in the foreground, I can see all of that. Now, the tree, once I start looking out into the background and the middle ground, I won't be able to see those things anymore because they won't be there. So I'm gonna stop coloring now, but you can see how I can make some light and some dark spots, even with just two values. Now, some of you might have some other tools at home. For example, like some of you might have crayons. And crayons are an awesome tool and I love using them. And I'm gonna show you why. A lot of people think crayons are only like the little kid's coloring tool, 
but it's one of my favorite tools to work with as an artist. Now when I work with crayon, I'm gonna color my trees in these two different spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start coloring. Now again, I color just little spaces at a time. Now the cool thing about crayons or colored pencils or color sticks is that I can use values to make them look different. So I colored in my whole tree there. But what I can do now is let's say that I really wanted it to look like it was darker at the tops of those trees or down at the bottom of those trees. I can press harder with my crayon and it changes the color. Now the other cool thing I can do with crayons that I can't do with markers is I can mix colors. So if I wanna change it even more, I can go in with another color on top and let them blend together. And I can make a whole new color. I can't do that with a lot of my other tools. Or let's say that I really wanna get some yellow in there. I can go in and I can add some of that yellow into my color here, okay? Now, again, to show you the difference, when I'm using markers, markers only color in really one way. Markers color flat. So whereas with, color, or with my crayons, I can get light, and I can get dark, and I can mix colors, and I can change colors. I can't do that with marker. With marker, what I get is flat color. And now when I color with marker, the best way to do it is to color with flat, straight lines. So I don't end up with all those squiggly, wiggly marks that are kind of goofy looking. This way I color it in really nicely. But as you can see, which one looks cooler? The trees in the background, because they have way more types of colors and way more details. Now I can kind of overlap markers a little bit. If I start with a light one and I add darker colors, so I'm some of my sticks, I might come back in. Now a cool thing that I can do if I wanted with this is I could actually start with marker and this is the only way that I really like working with marker is when I get to use another tool with it. So maybe it's that I'm doing it with marker first and then I'm coloring over with crayon to change it even more. And I can color on top of marker with crayon and change it, but I can't really color on top of crayon with marker. Watch what happens. If I color with my marker here or my crayon first and then I go over it with my marker, you'll notice it doesn't stick on top of the crayon. Now this is kind of cool because then I could draw a picture with crayon and color over it with marker, but I don't necessarily always want to do that. So I've got my picture here so far. Now some of you might have even more tools, things like oil pastels that you might use or things like markers, or, or I'm sorry, paints and things like that. If I don't have those, don't worry. I don't need to use them. I can use just the tools I have in my house. Now, one thing that I want to share quick about markers is if I don't have any paint, I can use these like markers. That's the only time that I really, really love markers. And if I do that, if I'm using a washable marker, I can go ahead and color with it. And then I can take a brush and I can add water and I can watercolor over it. And it's going to turn this into watercolor paint. So I could color my picture with water or with markers and then color over it. This is really good for those markers that are like dried up and that are getting really kind of weird looking where they don't look juicy and colorful like this. They look kind of messy. If I use watercolors or turn it into watercolor, that looks really nice. But again, cool thing about oil pastels, just because I have them here, something that I can do when I'm working with them is again, I can blend the colors. It's harder for me to do values with them, but I can blend the colors even more than I can with crayons. So if this is my sky, I'm gonna really quickly color it in. Some cool things that I can do that I can't necessarily do with crayons is I can start to mix my colors a lot. So let's say I wanna make it look like my sunrise is coming up. I'm gonna take a red and I can add a little bit of red there. And if I press lightly, I can kind of blend them together. I can keep overlapping my blue on top of my red here. And you can see now it starts to really look like it's kind of glowing on my sky and I can make it look like a sunrise coming up. Or if I wanted to make it look like it's darker at the top, again, I can color some darker color on the top and I can go ahead and take my oil pastel and blend it back together. And I can mix those colors together, which is super cool. And my crayons can't do it just like an oil pastel can. But again, same thing is my crayons also don't work quite or work a little bit better at certain times than my oil pastels do. So I can always try different things. What I'd like you to try this week 
is just try different materials, but do try thinking about the space in your picture. Do you need to have a horizon line? Will you have things that are in the front like my tree? Or will you have things that are further away like this tree line way back here? Or will you have things in the middle ground like my bushes right here? You can decide where you wanna put things in your picture, but I do want you thinking about what arrangement you want for it. And do remember, always, always, always start with pencil. Never, never, never begin with any other tool because it's hard to fix other tools. It's much easier to just make a mistake with pencil and erase it. But do try some different things and show me what you've created. I'd love to see what happens. Have a good day, boys and girls.